painful. I mean, you send them off to war and you worry that they won't come home or that they'll be maimed. And Michael came home. It's just that he's still not home. He's, uh, we're still waging a battle daily to try to obtain his release. We do the daily things we have to do to keep a house uh, going and, and keep our jobs. And then each and every evening and every weekend, it is focused on Michael and trying to obtain his release. Uh, we work every night and writing emails and addressing emails and answering emails and writing letters to anybody we can think of that might listen. I mean, there are some days when you feel that there's just no more gas to fight. And then you sit down and you get a phone call from somebody that says, gosh, I've I heard about Michael's story and I just want to encourage you to keep fighting. This is a travesty. And you take a deep breath and you suck it up and you go on down the road and you keep fighting. All of these he's read, all of them have been opened. I mean, he once he gets them at the DB, then he sends them home to us to keep for him. Well, Michael, I hope this letter finds you well and you had time to read all your letters you're getting. I do hope you have a mountain of mail every day as you're a national hero. I can honestly say without a shadow of a doubt what occurred that day in Iraq with you, that I would have done nothing different. The safety and the security of the platoon is important. I, I guess what I was thinking is is uh, how much pressure we put on our soldiers to always make the right decision and do the right thing and how they strive each and every day to survive the difficult circumstances they're placed in. And for this Marine who took the time to write a letter to Michael to say, you know, I got your back, I understand. Um, it's just It just seems like two brothers talking to one another who fully understand each other. The letters encourage me. They made me believe that, that throughout this process, this four years, that people are listening, they understand Michael's story, they understand the situation he was placed in. And it gives me great encouragement and hope that there are so many people praying for him. As a former Air Force NCO, I still believe in the fairness of the UCMJ and I'm confident that you will be exonerated and that justice will be served when you receive your hearing next month. I think it probably means as much, if not more, for him, particularly to get a letter from a soldier um, or a Marine uh, that says that they would have done the same thing and they salute him. I think that means a great deal to him. I think it means a great deal to him to get letters from everyday people that hand draw him birthday cards and send him pictures of their granddaughters just to encourage him and to share with him their daily lives. I'll call Scott and then I'll give you a call. We're up there visiting Michael at a minimum every other weekend. Sometimes it's every weekend. And the process is getting up uh, sometimes at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, you know, getting in the car, driving five hours. Most of the time we stay over Saturday night so we can visit him Sunday morning and then we come home Sunday afternoon um, about 4.30, 5 o'clock, unpack, get ready for work the next day and, and do our daily work, things that we have to do and, and uh, get ready to go see him the next weekend. We've been whining at the gate, just let us in the light. <laughs> Generally, being a mother is wonderful. Um, you know, there are some hilarious moments in being a mother. There are some uh, moments when you become so frustrated uh, that you don't know what you're going to do next. There are uh, trials with having children and being a mother in that every obstacle they face, you feel tenfold. Um, Michael's trial, I mean, the only thing really that keeps me going with Michael is when I have the opportunity to see him, to see how well he is handling this. I, I thank God every day that I had the privilege of being his mother. 
as well as being the mother of my two other sons, Brett and Curtis. But I, I'm thankful every day that, that God gave those kids to me.